Before we get started on today's episode, as always, we want to acknowledge the tour sponsor, African Pride. African Pride. They have been giving great hair products for you and I. African Pride. The, you guys can have that if you want. I was about to say the unofficial theme song for African Pride. <laughs> uh, winners will receive a giveaway box just like this filled with full size products. There's all type of goodies in here. Um, let me see if I can open it. Um, here we go. Can you see that in the frame? Black castor oil, moisture Black treatment, hold cover edges, healing oil. It's like all type of stuff in here. There's healing oil there's oil? conditioner in here. There's moisture butter in here. There's sealing oil. Uh, I said moisture butter, conditioner, edge control, child, some of everything is in here. Um, and this, the winner of the, every week we're giving this box away, every single week. So thank you to African Pride and thank you to us. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, in order to enter the giveaway, all I need you to do is like the Love Hour page on Instagram and tag at the Love Hour on our Instagram. Okay super easy we don't make it difficult we don't make it difficult at all very very simple okay okay bye all right let's get the show started or hi <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Hour podcast. I am your host, Miss Kev on stage, and I am joined by my husband and co-host. The Kev on stage. The Kev on stage. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. The podcast, the Love Hour podcast is about life, love, and the pursuit of happiness. Kevin and I share our experiences with you and the revelations that we've received from those experiences. In real time. In real time. Sometimes they're based off books. Sometimes they're based off other information we've received, whether it be via podcast or books. Sometimes, child, the Lord just drops stuff in our spirit. And sometimes she can get on my nerves and we talk about it. And sometimes I begin on her nerves and we talk about it. Amen. Sometimes I buy her shoes that she returns and we <laughs> be talking about it. And people have been, if people don't know the end to the story. And that is that I did return those shoes, but I got them replaced. She replaced them with I replaced a black it pair with, that is more practical. Not only are they more practical, but they're more comfortable. Than your other shoes. Than the other shoes. Not the ones I bought her. The other no, they black are. pumps. No, no, no. They're oh, they more. Are? Yes, they're far more um, comfortable than the ones you bought. They're more comfortable than my Steve Madden's. <sighs> and I've worn them all weekend. Someone would, on my Instagram was like, Melissa, are those your Steve Madden's? I was like, no, nah, girl, these ain't the Steve's. These are the Christians. These ain't the Steve's. Ain't the Steve's. Um, so if you saw me at all this weekend, this weekend being the 10K shy weekend. Clap, yes. clap, 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 clap. We talked at length about this on Righteous and Ratchet about how I failed. But you're going to have to listen to Righteous and Ratchet to hear my thoughts. Oh, I want a preview. Well, they're listening to this after Righteous and Ratchet, so we haven't recorded it yet. But Righteous and Ratchet drops before. Yeah. That's why I was saying I've already talked about it. So what if we have Love Our listeners that don't listen to Righteous and Ratchet? You can't then just they give don't a snippet? Know. How are we going to cross pollinate our podcast? I think I'm asking you for a teaser. Fine. Go check it out. Fine. That wasn't a teaser. That's though. a cross promo. Yeah, it was a cross promo. I said a teaser. I've told you. For the people. They need to go to Ratchet and Ratchet and listen to it. Because I don't know what I'm going to say yet. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I'm about to tell you my thoughts. How about it? Don't, don't. Okay, so <laughs> the, the, the 10K Shy was a, the biggest promotion or campaign, I'll say, that we've had for the tour from last year to this year. Um, mm -hmm. And while we did not reach the... Um, we were only off by like... 6,000. The goal of 10,000. We it's did reach more much. than 4,000. And excuse me, I am quite proud. Are you? I am. I told you that. You did. That I'd I, like to hear you say that again. I am. I'm proud of the dream that you had to even get to 10,000. I'm a proud that of what we've accomplished to get to four. You know the saying, uh, shoot for the stars and land among the moon? Nope. Shoot How does it go? The the there stars. you go. Shoot for the moon and land among the stars. Shoot for the or, uh, stratosphere, land amongst the super stratosphere. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think to even have a desire to dream that big allows you to reach a goal you didn't even know was like 
uh, able to be obtained. Mm-hmm. And I firmly believed I was going to get 10K. Right. And Until so, like about two weeks out, I was mm-hmm. like, ah. And we sold a buttload the week of. Yes. We sold and more the day, the day of. of than we probably had. We sold more the day of than we sold on some cities. Yes. Like overall with so plenty of time. I think, um, and honestly, canceling, I said this uh, as well, you had so many shows that weekend were, that were within driving distance of Chicago mm-hmm. um, that if you would have canceled those, who knows, you probably could have got up to 6,000. Yeah, Jay actually lives in Chicago, but he lives far north to where the Milwaukee show was actually closer to him mm-hmm. than the Chicago show. Right. So, and Chicago is a massive yeah, city. Yeah, it's huge. So whatever part of the city you're on, you're far from people on the other part of the city. <laughs> Jay took two hours, over two hours to get from his Traffic house. Traffic was show. horrendous though oh. as well. So if you, if you uh, oh. came out and weathered that, my va- body. that traffic... Okay. Thank you so much. We sat in traffic for a good hour and a half, I want to say. There was a black dude walking on the freeway. Oh, there sure was. It's part of the reason there was traffic. He had a little fedora on, and I was like, what is happening in Chicago today? Yeah, that was hilarious. And we went to the W... I'm not going to sell that story. <laughs> I'll save that for the bonus episode of Righteous and Righteous, okay. where I can speak freely. Okay. Uh, the, the, the TV interview. Oh, my. Whew. Shouts to the right back. <laughs> right pack only. So um, anyway, I just want to say that I'm proud of you for um, you. dreaming you. that big. And I also want to say thank you to, there were people in the audience that listened to the podcast. And flew. Some people flew from Raleigh to the Chicago show just because yeah. they wanted to be in the number. Yeah. So just, you know, people that were willing to come out and support that dream, support that campaign. Yes. Thank you guys so we much. I best, appreciate it. Best community. Yeah, I agree. I always struggle when people say like, I'm a fan. And I'm like, I don't think I really have fans like that. Like, I don't consider people. I just consider like, thank you for your your support but i don't really consider it like a fan mm-hmm. like i don't feel like I i'm fan worthy well. well you are mm-hmm. I'm, I'm i'm you're stan worthy i stand miss kev on stage i i still think that's like i'm like willing to support the things that she does like that's like me with beyonce like i stand beyonce meaning she drops an album sight unseen here's my 25 dollars like that's a done deal um yeah well you dropped a conference that cost much more than 25 dollars and people bought it sight unseen right but i'm saying that's standing like i don't feel like a fan is like i don't know it, it just i don't know it has a different connotation to don't me so i struggle with that listen you're engineering small we right listen now. to the Brene brown a call to courage Dang. in the car Woo! And um, talk about preaching. Yeah, she preached a lot, but that engineering smallness. You engineer I forgot, smallness a lot. I absolutely do. I absolutely one hundred percent engineer. You deflect. Smallness. You defer. You oh, minimize. Sure. You you swat away. Oh, well, she's a the click time. a minimize box. Clicky the click click. Yes, I do. I 100%. enough of that. You don't have to boast. Yeah, and I think but that's don't minimize. So the problem is, I don't know how we got here, but we're here now, so we're going to continue. Uh, the problem is that trying to find the balance of mm-hmm. being humble, right? And but also recognizing and throw back to Melissa, taking up all of your space. Yeah. Because engineering smallness is not taking up all of your space. And right. sometimes you can confuse engineering smallness with humbleness. Boom. That was a word. That was great. Yeah. That was good. And so trying to decipher, am I being humble? Am I engineering small? Like sometimes that can get like confuse it mm-hmm. in your mind i am confusion i am confusion <laughs> joey says that all the time have you seen that meme Mm-mm. that it came from Mm-mm. so is you've seen it josh this this lady was learning english she, i think she was asian she was like america i don't understand this one is kansas and this one is not our kansas it's arkansas oh. i am confusion <laughs> that's where it came from oh i didn't know you gotta learn your memes man the listen know the memes she is correct yes she's absolutely right and i am confusion and i am confusion too child <laughs> um okay so are we done with that that was just kind mm. of a randomness okay um so thank you is ultimately what that was about and not engineering smallness in your life which mm. we still don't have an answer on how to i determine. never engineer smallness shoot <laughs> Big balls everywhere I go. You feel me? But how, do you have an answer on how you can tell the difference between engineering smallness and not taking up and like being humble? I think it's um, in your proactive or reactiveness. People who are not humble tend to boast about themselves. I'm this, I'm that, I'm better than you or that. Okay, so you're saying think, it's a proactive. Yeah, I think if you like, I, I feel like I'm a good comedian. Okay. A great comedian. Okay. I feel like I'm fantastic at it. I don't go around saying, I'm better than you, I'm better than y'all, I'm this and that. But people are like, Kev, you are really great. I'd be like, thank you. (laughs) 
I don't be like, oh no, I'm, you would say I'm not great, girl child. I ain't even do nothing bad. I got three dollars to rub together. I got a biscuit and a dream. You do that with everything. You don't just be like, you know what? I appreciate that. Thank you. I am. I'm super dope. You're right. <laughs> but see, the, the you went for you went from. I, I, that's why all, all all for you. All it is is just saying thank you. Thank you. Okay. Because you you do that with compliments. I know girl, you look good, girl. I messed my makeup up. I had to smudge the eyeliner. I had chicken grease in my eye. That's your first thing is to to to. to, chicken to grease? You always want to like make the compliment go away. I forgot what I used to say about you. I don't know, but that's true. I think you're right. I think that yeah. is. All you got to do is say just thank you, because you be you be doing a great job on your makeup. You mm -hmm. great at the love hour. You don't have to be unhumble. You don't have to be whatever the opposite of humble is. Boastful. You're more than hum mm. there's boastful, there's humble, and then there's you. What? Who's like, you're less than humble. Engineering smallness. Yeah, ESN. You're ESN right now. Engineering smallness. Uh, we got it. We're moving on because you went from making sense to not making sense. That's how I do. Keep let me talk and it'll, it'll end up nowhere. Okay, so that's why I work good in little sound bites. In, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with uh, this, or, that, or this. People have been calling me out because they're like, Melissa, somehow you turn this back to this or that. Because all you did is stop making a big deal about it, and then you just be like that or this, and then you say the question. Yeah. But it's that or this with Kevin Lee. Is it this and that or that or this? That or this with oh, Kevin Lee. Okay, Liz. so you just said it right. Because Who've been calling me out? It's so funny the things people notice because honestly I wasn't doing that on purpose. Oh, I just you weren't? I it. bet. Okay. The question is, um, someone sent this in and the question was, remember Melissa, oh, would you rather have the same song play everywhere you go all the time in Do your I get world? to pick this song? Yep, but it's forever. You don't get to change it. You pick one song and it's the same song that we've played your entire life no matter what Whew. or no music at all. Or no music at yeah. all? So one song, your whole life, once you pick it, it goes unchanged, or no music at all. You guys like it? First of all, the thought of no music at all is terrifying. Music is so necessary. Would you understand, or would you know about music beforehand? Like, would there be a period of time where you're like, okay, that song has to go away? Oh, good question. Go What's more torturous? You would know about music. To know about music. Yeah, to know about music it. and then not have it. Absolutely. Well, the thing is, any song you pick, if you always listen to it, you're going to hate it. Right. Before my iPod or iPhone had that thing where I had that song that plays blank, it would play the first letter of, yep. or whatever the A song mm -hmm. was. I ended up hating it. It was a Miguel Adore, Adore for a while. Adore mine too. It was and Kanye I, Addiction for a while. Then man. it was like some other song. I now hate all of those yeah, songs. Yeah, I don't. I just listened to Adorn the first time over the weekend for the first time in like probably three years, and I was like, oh, I like it you, again. You needed a break I from it. I needed a full break. But the thing about music is, part of it is, it's such a mood. Like That's I don't true, listen actually. To certain music I listen to when I need to work out, I feel stronger. When I listen to Toby's music when I'm working out, I feel like I could throw weights out the window. Okay, so actually you're right. So I had my answer, but I think about over the weekend, uh, we were in the airport it was early in the morning we had a layover and i went and got breakfast i put my headphones on i listened to beyonce and it changed my whole life the album yes yeah i music like has that effect i was just in such music a can turn you up or mood. turn you down that is it can so put you in the mood true. for sex put you in the mood to fight it could it could relax you there's music you want to when i want to study when i want to that's true chill. on the plane i only listen to smooth r&b when i'm on a flight really yes because it'd be like Mm. I listen to her, SZA. I listened to Beyonce for a while. Right now, it's Ari Lennox, and it's just like, oh, that's the Apartment Girl. Yeah, oh, Shea Butter, baby. They just I hit put, me. To she's this. my this tour from henceforth now. She's but like, put yeah. it on. I used to listen to um, uh, what's the guy you sent me? The, but you're going through like a whole host. Sorry, of things. sorry. I just you got me excited about I it. Love but there's so many good musics. To okay. To. What, hold on, real quick. What's the guy with the four or five? Pink something? Pink Sweats. Pink Sweats. Four songs. First of all, pause. Loving all the new artists putting out four or five song, 23 minute EPs mm. where you don't like it's. I, I fall in love with you because I don't, you don't give me a chance to start disliking your right, music. Right, 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 right. Because it's like, these are my four Fair, or five best songs. Best songs. Actually, okay. I would prefer that too. Yes. Don't give me don't come out 10 with songs, songs and then three of them are junk. Yeah. Let me love you first. Uh, to answer your question, I probably would go with the same song over and over. Do you have the song in mind? Here's the thing. I think I would pick a really long song. Like, I wouldn't pick anything upbeat. 
Okay. I'd pick like Oceans. Okay. Because if it's if it's a song I have to hear all the time, I'd rather be something that I might not notice. Mm. Like Oceans starts off like bling, 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 and then has a little turn up piece. Yeah. But like if it was something like like Stevie Wonder, like isn't she like, yeah. then that being in my head all the time yeah. if I'm in a bad mood would drive me insane so something like that or a really long gospel song like calling my name some 18 minutes you want to go in the whole time though but I'd if I can only listen to one type of music I'd rather be music that can calm me down okay then can turn me up because otherwise if I'm just like rap I'm like <clears throat> you know what I mean so who are you fighting like that a small man <laughs> But the thought of no music ever, I'd rather be tortured by one song than to never hear music again. Okay, um, I think my answer, I think I said what I said when I said what I said it. And that is, um, I think I'm going with no music. Ever? I think so. You don't be on music I like that I don't be though. on music like that. Melissa has 18 songs on her phone. I do. When she has her song plugged in on a road trip, I'm like, please, can I put my phone in, please? Because I, it's, it's 18 songs, 16 of which are Beyonce. One is a Nick Jonas song, and one is Sam Smith. She has her white boy crushes for the summer. I have a one and white boy crush every right single summer. It's, uh, it's not oh, last summer. It was not Sam Smith. No, no, no. What's that it's um, Sean Mendez. Sean Mendez. Sean Mendez was her crush last year. I love him. Uh, he Smith has a concert, and I've like seriously contemplated a tattoo. You gonna learn how going long? To, how many songs you don't? know I know, yet. and that's the only reason why. Because I contemplated buying a concert ticket. I'd love long. to see you in there with a whole bunch of 12 year old white Man, girls having a good singing time. Sean Mendes. Song. I would have a great time. They're going to be like, Where's your daughter? What you mean? This is I, for me. This is for me. I don't Melissa, even have daughters. <laughs> Melissa's going to be on the front row like, Sean, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> what was that song you love from him? Um, da, 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 da. You take me places that tear up my, my reputation, but you feel my decisions. Baby, Baby there's that nothing that holding me back. back. Dun, 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 oh. Dun, dun, dun. oh. <laughs> it's a fire song. It's a great song. It puts him in a great mood. Okay, so okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with one song. And you're okay with no music. I'm okay with no but music. But you listen to the radio. You listen to more talk radio than anything. So, Be, And that's why. Because I would much rather listen to people talk and engage versus. I don't ever even versus, turn the radio yeah. on. Only time I listen to the radio ever is in your car. Yeah. Me and Joe be having a great time. Oh, my gosh. You know what else puts me in a really good mood? What? Wine. Man. Let me tell you what. <laughs> Wine is lit. Listen to me, people. <laughs> Wine is amazing. It goes great with the dinner. It goes great with um, a moment to just relax mm -hmm. and chill out. We have glasses of wine a lot on these long shoot days. We do. We get home. Josh has been over a couple of times. Yeah. We're about to have a conversation. We do. Pop too. a bottle. We finna get, not lit. No, not lit. We finna lit. get smooth. We, yes. It's a great time though. It's a great time. But wine can be intimidating. It can be, it can especially be. for us, because we're new to the wine game. Yes. We didn't drink for the first nearly 30 years of our lives. Yeah. So to go from that to like, first of all, there's so many names, so many flavors. So many what flavors, pairs so well many names. What? Yeah. I don't know. It's intimidating. Yes. So we want to tell you about a friend of the podcast, Pen Rose. Pen Rose. Um, when yes. it comes to buying wine, most people's selections have nothing to do with their taste. Honestly, because half the time you don't even really realize what you like or don't like. Mm -hmm. um, instead, they based on their decisions on whether or not the bottle looks good, if it's on sale, what they think they like, what their friends told them they like. That's true. Those are the things you base your decision on. Very by. true. Thankfully, First Leaf has a wine club that makes it very easy to discover new wines you'll love by taking a customizable quiz that walks you through uh, what you look for in a wine as far as taste is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, whether it has a buttery taste, a crisp taste, that's sweet I like sweet lines me mm -hmm. myself personally um, but also when you think you like sweet lines like we like I like sweet lines Moscato mainly mostly that's it um, so I only always get Moscato but when you take this quiz it allows it opens your eyes to say this is something you might also like right. this is something you might also like which yes. kind of just expands your mind yes. um, to try different things um, so with Pin Rose you can sign up with our link and you'll get an exclusive intro offer six bottles of wine for only $29.95 Five plus free shipping. Nice. Child, six that's bottles amazing. of wine. That, that goes a lot. That's long a fantastic way. deal if you ask me. Thank six you, bottles. $29.95 plus free shipping. Child, anytime free shipping is available. I'm halfway home. I am. Ha listen, and wine bottles are heavy. Child, listen. 
sign up with our link and you'll get an exclusive intro offer that's six bottles of wine for only twenty nine ninety five. Woo! Woo! Why are you wooing? That's a great deal. That's a great deal. Free shipping too? Because six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five, first of all, is a great deal. Plus you get free shipping. Anytime you have free shipping, sign up. Because shipping be expensive. Mm-hmm. And wine bottles are heavy, which makes shipping more expensive. So you get six bottles of wine for only twenty nine ninety five plus free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash love. Again, that's tryfirstleaf.com slash love. That's six bottles of wine for only twenty nine ninety five plus free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash love. You very good? Mm-hmm. I'm very good too. That's a very good deal. Y'all should take advantage. Uh, okay, so we're going to get into today's topic. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell a little bit of a story. A few weeks ago, I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about, you know, everywhere I go, to be honest, I end up talking about love and relationships with mm-hmm. people. It's just like a conversation that. So, what do you think about your marriage, <laughs> ma'am? This is a Wendy's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like, honestly, it just always comes up, like whether or not I bring it up or someone else brings it up to me. It's just a a constant conversation that I'm having. (laughs) So um, I was talking to a friend of mine and she was telling me about um, her relationship. And one thing that she told me, this image was so powerful. I actually wrote it down and it's something that we wanted to talk about. So what she was saying was that when her and her husband get into arguments, they're at a point now where they know there are certain topics they can't talk about because they know they're going to disagree and it's going to end up being like a huge explosion Mm -hmm. um, in their in their house. Right. So instead of arguing, she says she'll go to one part of the house. He'll go to another part of the house. And she said what they do is they sit in silence yelling at each other screaming in silence screaming in silence yes and that image was so powerful Mm -hmm. because i know of so many occasions where we have been not even like on the opposite sides of the house you can be in the bed together in the bed together sitting in silence it feels like a chasm Mm. I mean, you can be literally this close to me, and, and I couldn't feel like be you further couldn't apart. Be further apart from me. I'm talking. About, you know when you have magnets when you're a little kid, yes, and you push the two parts, and together, they're fighting against and that tension. You could feel that, that was a good. That was a good visual in our relationship, and and sometimes the longer you sit in that. It feels like the tension grows Absolutely. and it pushes you and you uh, uh, a couple of hours becomes a, a night. Yep. A night becomes a weekend. Weekend becomes a week. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, it's like, then you're like, man, we've been beefing for a minute and I don't even remember what I don't what even the remember initial what. But thing because was. you haven't talked about it and soothed it, smoothed it over, um, that tension stays there and then it grows. Yes. And sometimes I feel like if you. Like, okay, so she was saying there's certain top topics, right? Mm-hmm. You can give up on that topic, topic mm-hmm. overall, mm-hmm. and just the thought of that coming up will turn your whole mood. Yep. And you'd be like, you know what? I'm not finna do this. I've said this a couple of times. He doesn't get it. Mm-hmm. She doesn't get it. Yep. Not finna even, I don't even want to go there with him or her. And now you find yourself having an attitude and you don't even know you why. You don't even know why. There's been times where you've had an attitude with me. And I don't even know why. <laughs> I think that's, that's one. Of, so funny. Yes, I think that that What's is wrong. And then you, nothing. You don't know. I really. Do. I your your presence annoys me. I think literally so much so it's unclear. Yes, I think literally. You just be up here <laughs> breathing. <laughs> that, oh, every day you up here alive. Every day I wake up, you alive. You healthy? Oh, you healthy again? Child, listen. Shoot, why don't you go to work? I'm gonna tell you what made it harder for us. We don't have work now. Ain't no now. Mm-hmm. So when we're beefing, like when I used to work at ADD and we'd have issues or whatever, like I'm finna go to work. I ain't gonna be home till seven thirty. Well, that helps. That time separate. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd be like, man, I actually can miss you. Now yeah. every day I wake up, there you go, up in there, <laughs> in the room. I remember when we were first struggling with the tour situation, switch up. We, I'd be working in the bedroom, you'd work at the living room or mm-hmm. vice versa, mm-hmm. and it felt like you were gone. Yes. Go in there, make something to eat, you make something to eat, you leave, hungry, you, I mean, it just felt like yeah. gone. And I felt like I was in there like, man, that actually probably happened a couple of days ago. When? One of us screaming in silence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were cooking. Okay. 
uh, I was in the the bedroom. The boys were in the room. It felt like we were f- four different people in three different worlds. Tell me what happened. Why you were beefing at me? Yeah. I never really got to the bottom of it, actually. <laughs> uh, usually, I'm going to tell you what happens. There's been so many times where we've been screaming at each other in silence. And I have a, it could be these three things. <laughs> I didn't do this. Wait, did she you? She said that, or I said this. If I had to bet money, you remember, you know, I put like when you're doing roulette. Yes. I mean, put 40 on, it's this, <laughs> 60 on that. And, and 20. maybe twenty on that, and it's got to be one of those three things. Wait, wait. I'm in to the call, the call to courage. She actually talks about uh, that moment with her and her husband on the um, on the lake. Oh, and then when she goes back in the house, and she's like, you know, breakfast fairy. Oh wait, because I have to do this, yep. and, this. and he's like, did something happen? I'm so confused. What like what happened? I think that she moment, fast forwarded that in her mind. Yes, yeah, she did. She, when she was talking about um, when you're in a relationship long term, and even just really being alive for a while, you start to be able to see the tape from the end. Yes, at the moment it starts. So that's funny. This happened last night. I was I was playing with you, and it could have turned into a serious yes. argument, and I had to stop because you didn't realize I was playing. No, because you weren't playing. No, I was. I really was. I, re- I promise you I was. That's why I said it. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're joking around with Melissa. And sometimes you'd be joking and then you start be arguing for real. And then you'd be like, God, dog. And now we done had a. And I remember I told Melissa specifically. She was messing with Isaiah. And I was messing with her. And then we ended up talking. Zay Zay dog went in his room. He and he did. back to playing the video he game. Did. And we in here f- fake fussing. And then I remember when you were mad for real because I said something, joking around. You turned around like, you know that meme of the, the, the mannequin with the black head on? And it turns around like, you know what I'm talking I, about? Apparently, I never see these memes. You need to be on Twitter so we can have a better uh, relationship. <laughs> There's a meme you know of what? a mannequin. I stay off Twitter with because Twitter rat. is toxic. Oh, uh, I, I, I couldn't even have a. Twitter a, is toxic. I couldn't even have the a. Amount of information a that it's overload. You just read to be true. Yeah. It's toxic. Yes. If you don't have decent discernment. Yeah. For, I mean, I'm just. You saying. ain't grew up in a black church using a black church at work. And I know Listen. y'all be saying discernment, but that's a black church it at was, work. But hold on, real quick, I'm going to let you finish. Someone asked us for you to get a mic, and I was like, Joshua doesn't want a mic for the podcast. No. So I want everybody to know you can hear him in the background. He, Somebody was yelling at said, him. On yeah, the I know. People going to be like. Joshua needs a mic. He doesn't yeah, want a mic, y'all. No, no neither does Serena. Like <laughs> so anyway, you turned around like this. Okay. And I was like, girl, I'm playing. Luckily, you were like, okay. You yeah. took me at my word, and we were so exhausted from the tour I weekend. fell asleep three minutes later. I mean, I was asleep, and you were cool. I'm um, trying to think about what happened last week that you were upset about. Honestly, I don't know, because I don't even know what it was. I don't either. You didn't feel no weirdness? I'm, I don't remember at all. Is that because your memory sucks yes. or it's a blip? It's a blip. No, because my memory sucks. Okay, because you remember sometimes when we be beefing, I'll just hug, I'll just walk up and hug you. Yeah, but I don't like that either. I don't be knowing how else to break the ice. Yeah, don't do that. I'm doing that because <laughs> I don't know. Because otherwise, it just be going for long. That's true, but I don't want you to. Because I be like that, you like. Well, I'm still mad, but I'm allow this. <laughs> yeah. And it's like a break the ice thing, it is. and then later off you're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then I try for the draws. Maybe sometimes, but anyway. Uh, it's interesting that, and that's a really interesting thing to me is that, I know I always say that on the love hour, but it is interesting. I'm perceiving there is an issue on this particular day and you're not perceiving it. No, sometimes, it could have been. Oh, you're just saying you don't I'm remember. just saying I don't remember. Okay, sometimes there's times where it's obvious yeah, yeah, yeah. between both of us. Yeah. I, remember, I remember specifically your dad's house. Oh, yeah. Over Christmas break last year. This tension was. That was tough. And the thing about it is we stayed in their guest bed. Their guest bed was smaller than our bed. Yeah. So we were really close to each other in physically or in physicality and so far emotionally. Yeah. And I it, that you one to was be so far away that physically one, too. Okay. <laughs> that one was like a couple of days. Yes. And it was all everybody cheerful, cheerful, holiday, holiday. You Bottom book. Ain't nobody much happy. And I should have married the other dude. What? <laughs> What's we talking? I wanted to say, um, just to move from that to interventions. Do you have any? I have one intervention. We talked about it on the Love Hour this past weekend. Um, which, by the way, if you haven't attended or haven't gone to any of the Love Hour shows for this year, I almost think I like it better now that I revamped it. 
um, than last year's Love Island. Oh, absolutely. The live experience. You agree, it, Joshua? Yeah, and I think it should be. Okay. We should be constantly getting better. And also last year, we weren't doing the podcast. Mm-hmm. So we have more frame of reference and we've been talking for an hour every week. Yeah. As opposed to last year, we just were doing the live version only. Yeah. So I feel like we have more things to flow in. Uh, but actually, this this live is better. And I feel like it's already about to be almost over. And we're just starting. Yeah. This is like our first full weekend together. Yeah. It was so uh, good. It, you should come. You should buy tickets to come. And Love Hour has been selling more than the comedy show. It's more people it's, have been buying the Love Hour and comedy show tickets than just the comedy show. I think show. it's such really good information, and I'm like really truly and like, love it. You have the intelligent part, and I bring such great humor. Oh yeah, to he the podcast preaches. and the live. Don't give it away. Sorry. Uh, Did I give Melissa's it away? a good little lob up. Uh, for for a lot of these jokes, but I feel like it's great information, but it's not boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because usually the husbands, I look at the husbands, and they be, you can tell the husbands only they come from the wife. Dragged. But then once we get going, they're like, oh, you know what? This ain't even yeah. that that bad. You know, actually, this is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, they get into it by the end. Yeah. Way. So back to your intervention, because okay. my intervention is one of two things. I apologize if I'm wrong. Okay. Or I, you know, uh, tr- or actually maybe one of the things. Apologize. Okay. Try to pinpoint where we went wrong, uh-huh. and try to like, hey, Melissa, what are you thinking? I'm feeling this way. Are you feeling this way? So you're saying have a conversation. Have a conversation, or I just hug you. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it does. You like, get off me, boy. But and also, then I know I walk away. You be like, you could be on me. So the only other intervention, or the an intervention that I have is the voice notes. Voice notes are good. Okay. Tell them so, your, your thought process okay. on a voice note. Okay. So one of the things, so even when we talked about um, the shoes for Mother's yep. Day, I was listening to a book and um, I just had like a ton of thoughts come to my mind, like literally simultaneously. Um, so I sent Kev like six voice notes all at the same time. But I ended with the um, my thought process behind yeah. the shoes. And so what you do is you just take your phone, you could do this on Android as well, um, is you just record a voice note saying whatever it is you wanna say and you hit that instead of a text message. Mm-hmm. So the thing about text messages is that you interpret the tone based off your perception of what's happening. Yep. So even if the person means it lighthearted, you can interpret um, anger, you can interpret sarcasm, mm-hmm. you can interpret shade, you yep. can interpret condensation. Condensation. Condescension. Is that a word? <laughs> I don't know. Condens- condescending. Condescendingness. Sure. I don't know. We're going to allow it. It's yeah. definitely not condensation. Condes- <laughs> um, so you can interpret all of those things, and that is absolutely not the way the mm-hmm. person is saying it. Also, if you make a joke when you guys are arguing, it never comes across as funny. In, in via text message. Via text message. Mm-hmm. You. You. It's not. It, there's time and place. Yeah. But you be making a joke to try to lighten the mood, right? And it comes across as as being sarcastic or uh, disingenuous. Mm. Great word. That was a great word. Yes. We're all in our ACT. We are. We've been playing that word game that Josh told us about. Wordscape. <laughs> Wordscape. So I'd be just using new words. That's funny. So anyway, the what you allow to have happen when you do a voice note mm-hmm. is that um, you allow your spouse to hear your partner, whoever you're talking to, to hear your tone. Yes. And that matters a great deal. Absolutely. Um, did you want to say something? Mm, I was trying to find uh, a way in. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, do uh, you know what else matters with tone? What? The tone of your, the texture of your skin. Absolutely. Um, when you struggle with acneic skin, as I do. Acneic? Mm-hmm. Is a that word. a word? Yeah. Acneic? Mm-hmm. A lot. Wow. It's a real word. That's real. absolutely yeah. entering my mind for the first time. Oh, yeah. My brain was word. like, new word alert. Who is this? <laughs> Acneic. Um, Does that I, mean prone to acne? Yeah. Oh. Acne prone skin, um, which I just have. Like, I've just accepted in 35, 36 years. And it's so funny, though, just really quickly as a segue. Um, in this group, one of the ladies was talking about, Melissa, you know, you do your makeup. Like, can you answer these questions? And one of the ladies was saying, you know, well, I don't have very really bad acne because I didn't start wearing makeup until I was later, like later on in life. Listen to me, people. Can we stop with the misinformation that acne is caused? Acne can be caused by makeup. Acne can be caused by diet. When you're 30 something years old, that's probably not the reason. Mm-hmm. 
It is hormonal. It is biology. It, there's so Dairy. many. Uh, some that's diet. That's what I'm saying. Oh, cool. Sometimes you can pull out diet, da- uh, dairy, or things and in your sometimes diet. Sometimes you just have and acne sometimes skin. Sometimes you just have acne prone skin, and it has nothing to do with the makeup that you put but on. But you need to drink more water. All I drink is water. Can we just stop with the misinformation, please? Yeah, give them the good information. So what you can, thank you very much. I just wanted to, I just wanted to help y'all yes. uh, with that just really quickly. So one thing that I have used, Chad, I used it just yesterday was um, Meltdown by Bloom. It's this little like cute little bottle that you actually can travel with because it's very sturdy. Um, but Meltdown by Bloom is a powerful blend of natural ingredients that take down pimples overnight. It does not contain harsh chemicals, no benzo oil peroxide which is like a drying agent it can make mm-hmm. your skin very um very dry salsa salicylic acid sulfates or parabens it's vegan cruelty free and pregnancy safe these are all things that are very important mm-hmm. um and it is fast acting another thing that is very important right now our listeners will get 25 percent off and free shipping when you text our, our. to 797979 79. this is a special off- offer you can't get anywhere else and you support the love hour when you support our sponsors so text our, our. to 797979 79 to get 25 percent off meltdown blemish treatment by bloom if you don't love it return it for a full refund no questions asked again that's text out our- Text our H O U R to seven nine seven nine seven nine. So the other thing with tone after you get your skin together is that um, when you send the voice notes, it allows you, it'll it's twofold. Okay, so the first thing with voice notes is that it allows you, the person sending the voice note, to hear. Bless Sorry. you. You good? Mm, allergies said uh, they want to join the love hour. <laughs> <laughs> um. It allows you, the sender, to hear how you sound before you send this to your spouse. Yes. It allows you to make sure you're hitting the points that you want to hit. Mm-hmm. It is make sure it allows you to make sure that you are articulating yourself in a clear and concise manner. It and take some, some of the sting out of your words. Yes. It allows you to perhaps record a version, and say like, what you really want to like, say, yeah. and then hear it and say. That's actually not what I want my so spouse to hear. your first version is what Issa Rae does in Insecure. Yes. So Kev, you dumb and stupid <laughs> and you bought them dumb shoes because you don't know me, you don't care about me, you never love me. Whew. Kevin, what I want you to know is that exactly. I don't feel seen when you buy because me Because behind and- all of, if all you send is the version that is amped up and hype, you're just going to have an argument. Mm-hmm. And those arguments never result in true resolution. Absolutely. I think when you send those voice notes right before I went to the gym, because I've been working out and going to the gym, <laughs> it allowed me to hear that you weren't upset in that sense of like, I'm mad at you. Mm-hmm. But you were like, here's my concerns. I want to work through this. Mm-hmm. And it took some of the... Uh, defense mechanisms out of me that's the other good part about it yeah it allowed me to be like you know what and then i could see myself in and i i sent you back Mm -hmm. i was acting like a baby Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i really said i was acting like a baby and it's so good because it allows you to like it allows your partner to hear like your heart this is really what i'm trying to say and then they can take a moment take it in and say okay What I really want to say is you were being unappreciative you are being like this and then you're like so like okay Delete. so when we said that about then I told you about the gift cards I said when you uh when you took those shoes back right. it made me feel like you didn't like what I gave you right so in order not to feel like that I wanted to take those uh I wanted to give you a gift card right and you heard even though I said that clearly mm-hmm. you heard I just want to give you gift cards now that's true and then I said actually if you go back and listen it said it made me want it made me feel like I should give you gift cards right but I'm not going to do this I want to get you better gifts that you Mm -hmm. you know feel appreciated in that and that makes it a lot easier to understand because you can hear when I hopefully when I responded to you that I am also trying to work towards Mm -hmm. a resolution for this and I don't want to just be mad all day and I actually want you to give you the gifts and I also had to say my feelings were hurt Mm -hmm. which is really hard to say and it's so important to say my feelings are hurt because on the hood I'll still sock somebody but my feelings are hurt. You feel me? It could be whatever. <laughs> Why is it so hard for men to say it's that? It's weak. It feels weak. Vulnerability it's, is weak. It's not even vulnerability. It's it's we vulnerability. T- no, 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 no. It's not. Don't tell me what it feels. Okay, tell. I'm not telling you what it feels. I'm just telling you that being that emotionally honest. Oh, what she says that vulnerability, vulnerability is exposure to emotional. Um, 
uh, risk. Hold on, keep talking. I'm gonna tell you. So what? Oh, sorry, Josh. So what I'm saying is, as a man, it feels you are taught that you are supposed to be bigger than your feelings, or not feel your feelings, Mm -hmm. or whatever. So to say that you hurt my feelings makes me feel weak. So I guess it is vulnerability in the sense. Here it is, vulnerability. Sorry, I want to explain to you what vulnerability is. Zoom in on my face. <laughs> you did that, dum, Joshua. Dum, you did that on the last episode. I loved it. I was trying to screenshot or like screen record it to send it to you because I go back and watch it. That was hysterical. Okay, listen. Vulnerability is uncertainty, feeling like you're at risk, or emotional exposure. Emotional exposure. And so telling someone that you are, feelings your feelings are hurt, are hurt is emo- emotional exposure. That is vulnerability. Yes. And uncertainty because you don't know how I'm going to respond either. Two you don't two. know if that's a safe space to share those feelings. One of the things I'm really grateful to you about or uh, for you about who you are about, grateful, you <laughs> never, ever throw my feelings in my face. You have never used my feelings against me. I work very me. hard to do that. Uh, you want to do it sometimes? No, what I'm saying is because I have seen that done and because I know that this is before I even really realized that it's important to have like a safe space for you to share your feelings. I just recognize that if I want to um, have that intimate relationship with you, I can't then throw that in your face later. You, I feel like you only get one chance at doing that. Oh, for sure. Oh, so you gonna throw my feelings in my face? Bet. It's such a huge... Never um, opening up to you again. It's such a huge deal to begin with sharing who you are yes. with someone. And then to have that then turned around and thrown Especially in your face Especially when you're a later. real one like me. Like, I'm from the streets. You feel me? What street exactly? Dyer Street in El Paso. <laughs> <laughs> Keyword die. <laughs> Northeast El Paso, kids. Follow up on me. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like in a lot of relationships, men are holding back stuff because their feelings were thrown in their face 15 years ago one time. And you'll never open up to yourself again. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, you know, in, in all these movies, like, say, uh, Quiet Place. You seen A Quiet Place? I have. So, you know, when they made that sound, the alien open up their thing and they're vulnerable for that mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm. After you get hit one time like that, yeah. you go back into protective mode. Right. Like, okay, I'll never do that again because right. that hurt. Especially when you don't have a history of opening up. Mm-hmm. So the one time I open up, you throw it in my face. Oh, see, this is why I never, never did that. This right. is exactly why I don't be sharing. Right. Or, and, and you and you know, there's people in our who are listening probably probably have been in more relationships than one. Somebody in your current relationship is paying for the person who hurt your feelings three relationships ago. That's so true. You're like, oh man, that girl back in, you know, especially man, we got Josh, hurt. Josh, you heard that? You felt it? <laughs> <laughs> That's why that song, Music Soul Child, Previous Cats. Yep. I'm not Steven, Anthony, Anthony even, even, Leroy Ivan, damn girl, girl I've been, been right there for you since day one. So where is all this coming from? See, I'm not to blame for the pain that was caused by previous, previous <laughs> who had your heart before me. I used to sing that song to myself all the time. You did. About you. Uh, and you didn't have that many previous cats. I'm like, cuz, who was the previous cat Child, for you to be guarded? Really? You was having previous cats for your friends' relationships. Facts. I was like, girl, how are you holding me accountable for what happened to, to Sharonda? What? I just made up a name because I don't want to use your real <laughs> friend's name. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I'm thankful that you never did that to me because it allowed me to be open and honest. Do you feel like you're at a point of vulnerability with me that you feel like you can have that emotional exposure? <sighs> yeah, I think it's hard sometimes with the love hour is because like we share the stuff that's true about our relationship mm-hmm. live and on this podcast. And some of that is makes me look bad or makes you look bad. And I feel like in most relationships, they don't have to have the world privy to their, maybe not their best moments Mm -hmm. as a person. But because we're trying to help people and stuff, we put our real life in there. And when Mm -hmm. I hear some of the things back that I said, I'd be like, Kev, you tripped. But I think that's an important um, component of of reflection. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And to hear your words played back as like even if I didn't mean it as harshly as it came out, mm-hmm. when you hear it back, when you repeat what I said verbatim, and yeah. I know I said it, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I just be like, Kev, you really tripped. Yeah. Or you're not really aware of how you are coming across. Sure. Because I feel like when your feelings are hurt, with the gift for example, when my feelings are hurt, and I don't respond in love first, mm-hmm. I respond out of hurt first. Right. And when you respond out of hurt first, you are more than likely trying to, to hurt, hurt somebody hurt else. else. Even if you don't intend it maybe consciously, yeah. you're just, you burn, 
you, you just start, cl- right, you right, know, right. climb back or whatever. And, you know, that's, that's, I think, human nature mm-hmm. is both protective and like out of anger, hurt, whatever you were Protective is good. Yeah, negative, like a, like a animal protecting If you protecting feel bruised, young, right, or attacked, then you automatically attacked. go into protection yes. mode. And I think what we were trying to, what, what your intention with the gift wasn't to say, Kevin, you're not a good husband, you're not a good gift buyer. Right. It was to say, Kevin, I need to be more honest with myself and I need to help you buy things that that I will appreciate more. Right. So th- let me give you this information. And I wasn't taking it like that. Right. That's one of the things I liked about Bernie Brown is she was talking about how we create Her narratives. name is Brene. I know, oh. I was playing. Because she said people were like, who she is Bernie did. Brown? She did. Um, but she was saying that. By the way, did we already say it's called a call to cor- call call courage? courage. Okay. Brene Brown, call to courage on Netflix. It's amazing. You should absolutely she should watch like it. She looks like Susie Orman. I could see that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, one of the things she said is you create your own narrative. So if we're not talking um, and you're not talking to me about it, then I'm creating a narrative for you. Absolutely. And it's always more negative than your And it's detrimental. Are. It's Absolutely. detrimental to the With relationship. The debt. And it also, um, because you're always going to look for things to confirm that narrative. Yes. So I'm always going to look at everything you're doing from that negative component and that's going to build resentment. Absolutely. And that's uh, that resentment, to, I don't know if this is scientifically proven, but I'm gonna jump out and say it, that um, resentment is a hindrance to intimacy. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, you ain't gonna give up the butt if you resenting somebody. Okay, so I want you to expand your definition of intimacy to be more than just sex. Why? But I like give up the book. Okay, but what were we just <laughs> talking about was emotional intimacy. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, but I want to get to the point of give up the book. If, if we ain't close, if you resent me, you're not going to give up the book. You're like, I'm going to keep the butt. The butt closed. The blood closed early on Sundays at 7 p.m. like the mall. Should be open normally till nine or ten. <laughs> Holiday hours. Now the butts Chick Fil A closed the whole day, but I really wanted the Chick Fil A, or in this case, the butt. <laughs> <laughs> but it's closed. Remember that time I told Zay I'll buy him some Legos, and we went to Target, and it was oh, like a random yeah. holiday, and yeah. it was closed. Yep. And we, I was just like, this is closed on Easter. Was it Easter? It was Easter. Target was closed. I told Zay I would buy him some Legos. It was literally the only thing closed. It sure Walmart was. Walmart was open. It the sure mall was. was open. I mean, literally every other store yep. is open. And that's what it feels like when the butt is closed to you. It's like, usually this is open. But not today. The butt is closed on Easter's. But I, you know, all, all jokes aside, I feel like intimacy is the building block of an amazing relationship. A multi- intimacy that's not just sex. Related. Emotional and physical. Okay. I joke around a lot about physical, okay. but it, it's, it's it, you know, when we're not close emotionally, I feel far apart. Yes. And protein is a building block of a healthy diet. <laughs> it was, it's what our organs, muscles, hair, and skin are made of. I didn't know that. That yeah. your hair and everything is a protein. Mm-hmm, you knew that? Yes, of course. Y'all knew? Oh, Joshua knew. I, I'm the dumb dumb right here. No. Uh, that's why we're no, excited be to be. Be kind to yourself. Don't, make yourself, uh, don't engineer okay. smallness or dumbness. Okay. You knew, Serena? I did, but I Okay, everybody knew. That's why we're excited to be partnering with Care Of. Care yes. Of is bringing transparency and customization to the world of protein powders. First of all, anything that is customizable, I am a fan of. Me too. Because I'm I want- I'm not a one size fit all type of person. Me either. Get to know me. That's why when I go on like Netflix, try anything, and they're, what you're saying is based on your what you like and the things that you've looked at in the past, this is what we believe you would like, sign me up. Yes. So anything that allows me to take a quiz, assess what I am lacking, what I need, what I have, what I don't have, and it is customizable, I'm a fan of. And guess what? Care of allows you to do that. Absolutely. It has a quiz and it assesses whether or not you're getting enough protein, fiber, good fats, and based off the customization or the quiz that you take, they will give you a personalized recommendation to suit your diet. That's good. That's very much good. That's very much good. Um, If you want to snack smarter and get the most out of your workout or just make your daily smoothie healthier, Care Of will help you find the right protein and superfood powders that work specifically for you. Mm -hmm. That is specifically (laughs) for you. For 30% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter Love Hour. 30 at checkout again that's 30 percent off your first order of care of 
of your first care of order, you need to go to takecareof.com. That's takecareof.com and enter love hour 30. That's the number 30. That's L O V E H O U R, the number three, the number zero at checkout. Then we also have, because we don't only just care about like your body, we also care about like your feet. Mm hmm. <laughs> Because that's very much important and having shoes that are comfortable and don't make your feet hurt and ache and get corns and calluses are very important. Absolutely. Um, and so we have also partnered with Rothy's um, and they offer stylish, comfortable and washable shoes that are made from recycled water bottles. I'm always amazed at like, how do you what's the first step to taking a recycled body and then bottle and then making a shoe? Vision. Low key, that was a whole word. Mm -hmm. That was a whole word. Rothy's are the everyday flats for life on the go. They're stylish and versatile, and they go with everything from yoga pants to dresses and skirts. I actually have a pair on right now. Hold on. Very much comfortable. You've been rocking I these been, a well, lot. Uh, yeah, I have been work, working them a lot. Yeah. They are. They're made with this like very recyclable water. Material. Yeah. Let me show these to the people. If you're listening, you should check this out. On They're quite comfortable video. in real life, though. Very comfortable, and you know it's it's good to keep a comfortable shoe. You're just gonna grab these, especially as women. Yes, you, you just need to have a pair of go. shoes because you always have a pair of shoes in your purse for the the heels that are uncomfortable after the event exactly. is over. Exactly. Everybody has their oh girl. I'm finna we finna walk shoes. These Rothy's are these. Are these we finna walk shoes? Rothy's come in a wide range of colors and patterns, and they're available in four different silhouettes, and they're fully machine washable. That's a plus. So every time you do laundry, it's like getting a fresh pair of shoes. Check out all the amazing styles available right now at rothys.com slash love hour. Go to rothys.com. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash love hour to get your new favorite flats. Comfortable style and sustainability. These are the shoes you've been waiting for. Head to rothys.com slash love hour today. Today. I keep putting my mouth on this and I want to be grossed out, but it's our mind. It's, and it's just your mouth. It is just my mouth. Yeah, unlike when you licked that mic in the other show, and I licked the mic. When in LA. you licked it, it was uh, worse though. My lips just I like, thought my tongue turned black and died. Like tap it. it was yes, so, so gross. gross. So gross. I wanted to end my set right there. Yeah, I thought you were going to. I'm I not gonna lie. If I didn't have, I had like 15 minutes left. I if I had less than to. five, I'd have been like, all right, man, y'all been good. Thank you. <laughs> I really thought my you were going to. My tongue's grossed out. Okay, so last thing that I wanted to say about the intimacy vulnerability conversation and uh, <clears throat> when, at the top we were talking about being so close together but yet being so far apart, mm -hmm. screaming in silence to each other. Um, Serena's actually gonna post this on The Love Hour and it talks about that loneliness is the feeling of not being able to share things that are important mm -hmm. um, to you. And that's also, thing. What? I want to say something about loneliness. Okay. That's also, um, loneliness is a derivative of not being able to be vulnerable. Yes. When you're not able to like fully be seen and share. We even talked about this on the, um, when we were talking about the shoes and I was mm -hmm. saying that for me, because this new revelation that I'm a people pleaser, when I come to you and I say, hey, this is important to me. This is actually what I like. When you respond in a way that is um, not receptive, right. it makes me want to retreat. Absolutely. And not share. That's what happened with the um the shoes the most that i didn't realize yeah i realized that if i respond negatively the same thing with uh, emotional exposure absolutely if i if you open up and in in this case it was you not being vulnerable but you stepping up and just mm -hmm. just saying mm -hmm. it and i responded uh ah, you're you, mm -hmm. you're ungrateful you're hard to shop for you know blah 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 then it's then it it, it reinforces to you why this is see this, this is, is why exactly this is a bad idea exactly yeah and that's what happens in with me and i open up to you and you throw it in my face is like this is exactly why yeah, i don't yeah. share stuff with you I don't know. I can't find it. Okay. But it, she was saying how she feels lonely. You got to introduce I'm, what you're going to say. There's a her song where she talks about I feel lonely even though we're very close. Mm. I feel lonely even when we're together. I think is the exact mm. lyric. But I can't find it. That's that's the lyric I was looking for. I feel lonely even when I'm to, even when we're together. And that is like feeling lonely when you are in the same house. Woo! Just know her has a song about that. Okay. Um, but that's kind of what we were, that's kind of the whole precipice of um, 
Screaming in silence. First of all, this is an episode of SAT words. Yeah. <laughs> but I agree. Episode. Screaming in silence. So we talked about, um, do we give two interventions or just one? One intervention of the voice note yeah. is an intervention. And then did you have another one? I think I said apologize is one. Um, try to find the root cause mm-hmm. of the thing. And then sometimes I just hug you to break the ice. To break the ice. I that's, agree. That's just like, you kind of need like a, okay, so you didn't see this, but in John Wick 3, this is not really a, is it a? Uh, it's not really a spoiler, okay. but um, in, in a lot of movies, they have a parlay. A what? A parlay. Okay. Like things are going well. Let's have a conversation before mm-hmm. things get more and more difficult. Okay. And it allows you to say, okay, here's what's going on. Can we can we try to solve this before things? Get oh, worse? I got you. Okay. And that's what I think that hug is. It's the beginning of like, I don't want this to get worse. I don't want our feelings. Uh, about each other to go uh, even more difficult. So can we par? Let's stop here and parlay and say, "Hey, I feel this way. You feel this way. Are you feeling like this? How can we move forward?" Got gotcha. you. And, and that's you're saying really, that's what your hug is. That's what my hug is. Okay, it, good. it's a signal to you that it's I an know extension we, of the olive branch. Extension of like, the olive hey, branch. I want to end this. Are you willing to meet me right. so we can like actually talk about this and try to move yes. forward? So okay. if I go to hug you and you <clears throat> get off me, that's essentially you smacking the olive branch I got out you. of my out of my hand and then what happens is the vicious cycle um, when you want to talk you know inevitably later you want to talk yeah. and all I can remember is when you pushed me away right. when I wanted to talk right. so then I push you away and, and then you go down and down this yeah. negative thing yeah. so what we talked about in last year's live love hour is oh we should make that the next episode yeah even though you're mad try not to be uh, try to be open to mending while you're still upset yes that's hard to do though. that's very it takes a level of Maturity. Uh, maturity. Maturity is the word. A level of emotion maturity that is very difficult to realize I am still mad, but if I don't try to to uh, meet him or her there, this will this is going to get worse. Yeah. And eventually I'm gonna cool down, but I may have missed my moment Absolutely. to to have a resolution mm-hmm. because I wanted to be mad. Yeah. And sometimes the reason I think it's so hard is because at that moment you have every right to be mad. Yeah, you're still maybe in your you feelings. deserve it. Maybe you didn't aren't weren't ready to try and and break this. Sometimes we just wanna still be mad. And sometimes and that's the trouble though, because sometimes we just wanna stay mad. Mm-hmm. I know sometimes I'm just like, no. I just want to still be mad right now. Yeah, and then when you calm down, what happens? Yeah, you come talk good. to me, and I'm like, nah, you've uh, been nah, mad I'm all mad. day. Yeah. Nah, it's my turn. Yeah, I'm finna be mad. And then it was just next, next, you know, it's been a week. Yeah, yeah, concur. Cause it could be whatever. <laughs> all right, all right. Are we done? I think so. Do you have anything else you wanted to add? <sighs> the butt. Just wanted to sneak that in one more time. I also just wanted to <laughs> say that's a powerful image, and I think. Um, the butt? It is a powerful image. I think about it often. I'm like, man, the butt. Uh, the the image of screaming in silence <coughs> is a very powerful image. And there's um, been times where we crossed each other in the hallway, screaming, just screaming. No excuse me. Sometimes we would bump shoulders. I don't think we've ever done. Nah, that. you. Pff, what's up, cuz? What's up? <laughs> More. What's even worse? You scoot past each other. Let me walk around you. Yeah, yeah, Let me yeah. make something to eat. I'm going to cook something. I know you hungry. Mm-hmm. I'm not asking if you're hungry. I order Postmates for me only. The kid's <laughs> like, look, we didn't do nothing. We're also hungry. Nah. That's one funny. order. It's $20 delivery. One, one order. One order, please. I want one milkshake. <gasps> we should order fat sauce shakes. Oh. Sorry. All you ever do is introduce unhealthy items to the food. Sorry. I had a great workout in oatmeal, and now I'm thinking about a fat sour shake. They are delicious. Salted caramel. Oreo salted caramel. I'm not going to have a whole one, but I'll take a sip. Okay. Anything else you wanted to add? I love you. I love you, too. The butt. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining today's episode we will be back in your feed next week Thursday when we drop every episode and I think that's it bye sign up for the love hour conference okay okay bye bye